In this and the next few videos, we'll use component spaces to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of various linear transformations. Now, if you recall, calculating the spectra of linear transformations was the original motivation behind introducing component spaces in the first place. Now, in this video, we'll consider the reflection operator, a transformation for which we already know the spectrum. But in the next video, we'll consider the dilation on the space of polynomials, a linear transformation for which we couldn't determine the spectrum without the help of component spaces. So that will be a very exciting exercise because we'll have a chance to discover something that we're very curious to know but haven't been able to do until now. So getting back to reflection, of course we remember what the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. Let's say the first eigenvalue lies on the line of, the ref of reflection. We'll call it V1 and it corresponds to the eigenvalue of 1 because it remains unchanged under reflection. And the other vector is orthogonal to the line of the reflection. We'll call it V2. And of course this vector gets flipped by reflection. So its eigenvalue is negative 1. All right. So now let's replicate this result, the result we already know, in component space. So this is one of the examples where we know the answer. And so we're using this example simply to illustrate that this approach works. But in the next video, we'll rely on this approach to discover something that we don't know. Okay, so now we get a chance to analyze this matrix. And its eigenvalues are the same as the eigenvalues of the linear transformation. But its eigenvectors are the components of the eigenvectors of the original transformation. So indeed, the component space is a world that's parallel to real life. All of the same things take place in both spaces, but whereas here we're operating with real objects, in the component space we're operating with components of the real things. So everything here happens in terms of components. So once you obtain the final answer, it won't be the final answer quite yet. It'll be the final answer in terms of its components. So there is still this final step of translating the components to the actual answer. We've seen this before, so let's not dwell on it, and let's go ahead and determine the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this transformation, the eigen of this, excuse me, matrix. Now, the matrix eigenvalue algorithm is in full, inf is in full effect. In fact, we can, for the moment, forget where this matrix came from and simply concentrate on the matrix, determine its eigenvalues and its eigenvectors the way we've done many times before with matrices, and only then should we remember where this matrix came from and translate the answer in the component space to the actual answer. All right, so the first eigenvalue appears on the diagonal. Both appear on the diagonal because it's an upper triangular matrix. So eigenvalue analysis is quite simple. So the first eigenvalue is 1, and the second eigenvalue is negative 1. Okay? And of course, the first eigenvector is easy to determine because this 1 is alone in its column and it's on the diagonal. We've seen this situation many times before and talked about it. So the corresponding eigenvector is 1, 0. Okay, now this one requires a little bit more work, and we'll use this small area right here as our workspace. Okay, and it's minus 1, so we have to subtract minus 1 from the diagonal, so we have 2, 2, 0, 0. And of course, the eigenvector that corresponds to this eigenvalue, v2, is 1, negative 1. So we're done with the component space portion of our analysis. We have our almost answers. These are not quite answers. These are the components of the answers we're looking for. All right, so now let's translate these components into actual vectors, into the actual eigenvectors of the reflection transformation. So the first one is 1, 0. So we have to synthesize the actual vector with respect to this basis. And this is telling us take 1 of E1 and 0 of E2, and of course it's E1. It's this vector right here, and it's entirely consistent being in the same linear space as V1. So it worked in the case of V1. Now let's see what happens in the case of V2. 
one, negative one. So we have to take one of E1 and subtract from it E2. E1 minus E2 is of course, oops, this vector right here, which is this vector from the origin to this point right here. And once again, entirely consistent with the V2 that we already knew because it is in the same linear space. So there you go. This was our first demonstration that the eigenvalue algorithm in the component space indeed delivers the correct eigenvalues and the components of the corresponding eigenvectors. Let's now, so the problem is complete. So let's now solve it again with respect to the other basis that we considered. It was a blue basis, blue basis right here. And it consisted, it's gonna get a little bit messy, uh, of this vector. This was F1 and F2 was the same as E2. And with respect to this basis, the matrix that represented the linear transformation was entirely different. I believe it was this matrix, a symmetric matrix with minus ones in the diagonal position. Okay, so new basis, new component space, entirely different matrix representation of the same linear transformation. Of course, it has the same eigenvalues, which we, even if we didn't know what they were, we could have guessed them from the trace of zero and the determinant of negative one. So the eigenvalues are the same, lambda one, which equals one, and lambda two, which equals negative one. Now let's calculate the corresponding eigenvectors. And of course, they will be completely different from these eigenvectors. Hopefully, they'll translate to the same real eigenvectors, actual eigenvectors. So one corresponding to negative one, uh, V1 we'll call it, is, let's do this entirely in our heads. We don't need to write this down. Subtracting minus one from the diagonal results in minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, a matrix full of minus ones. So of course the corresponding eigenvector is one, negative one. For V2, we have to subtract minus from, from excuse me, minus one from the diagonal. So we get one, minus one, minus one, one. And it's easy to see that the null space of that matrix is one, one. So that's our corresponding eigenvector. Okay, and it's one, one. And we're done with our analysis in the component space. So let's now once again, make sure that we got our answer correctly. And that is, these are the components of the actual eigenvectors in for reflection. And notice how they're completely different from the eigenvectors that were previously computed, which is not at all surprising because we're working with a new basis. So all of the same objects in the actual world will be represented by different components in component space. Okay, so let's see what these vectors correspond to. The first one is one minus one. It's F1 minus F2. So it's this vector right here and it corresponds to this vector right here, entirely consistent with V1. So V1 was correct. And for V2, we have 1, 1, which of course is this vector right here. My finger might be off the board, but you can still see what I'm doing. And that's entirely consistent with V2, which is our proper eigenvector. So it once again worked. So this was again, a very good demonstration of how component spaces help us calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix. The matrices that represent the linear transformations have the same eigenvalues as the linear transformation that they represent, and their eigenvectors are the components of the, of the eigenvectors of the linear transformation that these matrices represent. Now, I would like to leave you with an interesting exercise that you should try on your own. Why don't you perform this, uh, carry out the same exercise, but with respect to an eigenbasis? In other words, use the vectors V1 and V2 as your basis. Calculate the matrix that represents the reflection with respect to that basis. It will, of course, be a diagonal matrix. 
Then find its eigenvalues, very easy task. Find its eigenvectors, they will be the standard basis vectors in R2. And then make sure that indeed they represent the eigenvectors of reflection. So I'll leave you with that exercise. And next, let's do, let's analyze the dilation transformation.